concerts he's performed. Jesus Christ. He just turned That's 80. Ridiculous, yeah. Well, we can start here. Um, but yeah, Paul McCartney just turned 80. Hell yeah. I don't know if you saw that or not. Oh, yeah. No, he did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's so dope. That's crazy. And he's still like touring. Yeah. Which is wild to me. Like, I, I think the oldest dude I've seen is um, Ozzy. Oh, nice. I saw Ozzy 2018. Okay. Yeah, nice. 2018, it was him and Stone Sour. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's dope. Yeah, it was a great show. And Ozzy, my God, he uh, he's old, dude. <laughs> he's Damn. fucking old. He um, he still got it. And then, like, a buddy of mine, it was funny, I was texting him. He, uh, he worked, like, EMS backstage. Yeah. And so... As they're prepping Ozzy in like what whatever version of a green room they had, yeah, I guess the head medic for Ozzy's team came to them and he was like, "Okay, so not to scare you guys, are any of you like are you, all of you guys prepared to run a code on Ozzy Osbourne if he goes down?" And they were like, "Oh, what the fuck, damn, <laughs> yeah." And I guess well because he like and this is like a routine like he goes out performs does yeah. his thing, and then um he came back backstage after the initial performance and they kind of like refreshed him he went back out for the encore which was like a 20 minute rendition of war pigs damn yeah because you know who uh zach wild is yeah, yeah, the guitar, yeah. Of course. he did a like a god 12 13 minute guitar guitar solo nice. for war pigs yeah bonkers anyway so they do their like 20 23 minute version of war pigs that's sick they bring ozzy walks off the stage and verbatim from what he tells of the story is Ozzy the moment like they had a line right yeah and the moment he crosses the line of visibility he just collapses and these people catch him and they drag him back to the green room and juice him up get him IVs get him all this shit and send him on his way damn yeah he's a robot (laughs) yeah 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 it's fucking crazy it's wild man um all right so I mean this is your fucking third time here so yeah yeah it's third time here uh, and I keep this nice. pretty unscripted, but sometimes, you know, I think about like what I want to say in the beginning, you know, start the conversation off. Hell yeah. And dude, like people know your name. Thank you. Bro. And Thank your, you. your name is you, synonymous with hard work. <sighs> you know that, right? Thank you, bro. Do you Thank know you, that? Bro. Thank you so much. Because you, you are Thank like, you so watch, much. let me, let me show you something real quick. I don't know if you saw this or not. Um, because I've found myself in a weird position where, I never thought I'd be with this podcast where I'm just talking to people I didn't even know existed. Yeah. Um, and one of them, who I've become a little more than acquaintances with, I consider him a good a, a friend of mine, uh, Robert Gibson. Yeah. Buck. Buck D, my boy. So I'm in the gym uh, this morning, well, I guess a few hours ago, and uh, I see fucking... On Facebook, Notorious T is one of the most talented people we have, and it ain't up for debate. You saw that, right? Uh, oh, shit. Yeah, you shout commented. Shout out my fucking boy, Buck D, bro. Yeah. Yeah. That's my dog. Yeah. So, did you guys have, like, an event last night? Bro. So, shout out my homie, John Blaze. He brought me out for the DJ Quick Show at the El Rey. I actually performed Probably for... Like uh, aiming that a little more towards your face. Oh, yeah. no. I got you. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, the... Uh, uh, my homie brought me out uh, on stage for the El Rey. He did a couple minutes, and I did eight. And I was able to kill like four songs, four and a half songs in eight minutes. And uh, <laughs> holy shit! Yeah, no, it's it's dope because I do it like the way I do it is the first uh, chorus, the hook, verse, hook, and then I'll go into the next song. You know, it's it's like giving it's them a medley. Little, yeah, it's, yeah, it's giving them a little taste, and then you know, I'm very sadistic with my fucking. Uh, concert set list because even duke city drip the one song that everybody goes crazy for i only do the chorus because i funny. literally just give them like the and uh, the craziest shit ever and then i just take it away and then <laughs> immediately i say i've got my set list down and then immediately i say follow that's all you get with that one follow me on instagram you know all that shit because <laughs> yeah. they were they're like what especially if you're from new mexico when i just come in i, I love for the land of enchantment like they just go wild but yeah, I was at the DJ Quick show last night. One of the craziest fucking shows of my life, bro. Yeah. It was crazy. Like the way that, uh, you know, the first time I performed at the El Rey on April 24th, and Bug D, I think, mentioned that, that, uh, mentioned that to you. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. It was sick, bro. It was dope. It was my first time performing at like one of these venues that I grew up 
idolizing. I've seen E40, my favorite rapper ever there. I've seen uh, backstage. I was backstage for Bone Thugs. You told I mean, me that first time you came yeah. by. Oh, yeah, yeah bro. Like, and, that, and that was all at the El Rey Theater. So I've experienced some things that most of... I've, I've experienced most of my idols at the El Rey. And to be on that stage twice in a couple months span is crazy bro and the energy is insane and i think the first i and just from an artist point of view i think the first time i did it i killed it but this time it was ridiculous bro i had the whole place jumping like the podcast is brought to you by one of our brand new sponsors bucked up nutrition look it's no secret that i love going to the gym fitness and nutrition is a huge part of my life and bucked up is partnered up with the podcast Help support it. I cannot be more excited. This is one of my favorite P workouts. It's a high stimulant nootropic. I'm hitting PRs today, so I cannot wait to use this. The Banff Black by Bucked Up Nutrition. They've also got, as you can see, some awesome clothing here. Um, I With my t-shirts, I personally prefer the low... Uh, short logo here. Use our promo code at checkout, OKPOD20, to get 20% off of awesome clothes, supplements, all their products here to include their stacks. That's OKPOD20, another awesome stringer here for an additional discount at checkout. It was ridiculous. It was absolutely, it was crazy, bro. So what, what, what about you did you change between then? Or what did you enhance, a, a little, I guess? A, a little known fact, and I'm going to start letting my nuts hang about it. One thing that I do, bro, <laughs> I practice my set every single day. Good. Every, every day since Good. before COVID, bro. I started way before COVID, like way before COVID. I would practice my set every single day. But then when COVID hit and I was just losing my mind, it, I would just practice my set every day, switch up my songs so I could know them and do everything different. So that's why I'm so seasoned with like the the way I do things because I've practiced my set a billion times. Good. And I do it every day. I did it before I came here. So That's dope. I did. Yeah. No, that's dope. It's a fat man's cardio for sure when you're a, <laughs> when when you're a rapper. When you're a rapper it's a fat man's cardio. Bro, I'm telling you, it's a fat man's cardio when when you're a rapper cuz cuz I mean it, and I've worked my body up. I don't break a sweat on stage. No. I don't. Damn. Yeah. It's Holy crazy. shit. Good yeah. for you. Yeah, I'm one of the very few rappers that doesn't walk off stage. I'm the most fat rappers have a sweat rag on stage. I don't have a sweat rag. That's one thing I can flex about. I might be a big dude, but <laughs> hey. I love you, buddy. It's good <laughs> to see you. Too, bro. Hell it's yeah. good to see you. <laughs> it's good to see you too, bro. That's Hell funny. Yeah. Oh my god. Um, <laughs> so another thing I wanted to show you. So my favorite song of yours is something i th well i obviously listen to it at enough during the weeks it's still you use spotify yeah yeah of course okay so you know how spotify does like their on repeat yeah like what is the shit you just keep yeah on repeat um so that has it bounces around between the top and the bottom but that remains like rap boot is, is still there oh nice it's, it stays there nice i fucking love that song my boy so Hell much yeah. um w and the music video was great Boy, it's very so much. it's homegrown it's organic it's very and, and there's quality to it too um so how long did it take you to make that song just like any other really good song that i have anything that i got on spotify like all digital platforms pretty much every one of those songs were constructed just like boom 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 yeah like i love just i'll pick a beat like i've pretty much told you i'll pick a beat at like 3 a.m in the morning just smoking and boom 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 it just unfolds and then I have to I sleep, wake up in the morning, go to the studio. It's done. That's how. That's the ideal way of how I like to record my music because the I get it so much in my head and the vibe and everything, and then I gotta book some studio time and do it. Yeah. So what? And then what was the process of making the video? <sighs> that was the cool part. Yeah, how'd you organize all that? So my boy J Rod, shout out my boy J Rod, the problem. He was in town, and uh, I was doing the Southwest Sixteen. I'm pretty sure we talked about it with Vile and yeah. everything like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, we would meet every day over there at the, uh, I think it's the Studio 519. Yeah, Studio 519 downtown. The one I told you about with all, you asked me about it with all the cool equipment and everything. You were like, so, okay. Yeah. Yeah, because I also know about that studio because a buddy, a couple buddies of mine uh, filmed their podcast there. Oh, nice. Yeah. 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 So. April Fools. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of them. I don't. Yeah. They filmed their shit there. And then my buddy who owns uh, Legion Iron. Him and then one of the April Fool guys, they do a podcast there too. That's dope. Yeah. Oh, that's dope. Oh, shit. Okay, yeah. So, okay, continue. Yeah. 
And uh, I was kind of off track. Well, oh, the the process of the music video. Yeah. So I got over to the Southwest 16. We filmed the. J Rod was waiting for me to get the. Uh, uh, he thought we were gonna film right away. He had to wait a whole like two hours for us to film and everything. We filmed the Southwest 16, and I came out, and my boy Kelly was outside. Shout out Kelly Cones. He was outside selling ice cream. So that's <laughs> the crazy thing is like we uh, we naturally started filming outside. I had a crazy ass designer backpack with me, so I was flexing that, and like it just unfolded awesome. It was so cool, and uh, yeah, shout out my boy Kelly Cones because we put a couple jars of some good good right there and made it just un- it was it was so cool. That's it dope. was really cool, and uh, the way that uh, my boy did the video was so cool too because we just boom boom boom. A yeah. lot of people don't work like that, and I work like that. So shout out my boy J Rod because we got a lot of shit coming for real. So and then. Again, because you're just a fucking hardworking dude, you placed in like the initial run of the Beatles um, competition. Yes, the John Lennon competition, yes. right? Yes. So what? What was? Walk me through like all of that. Like awesome. what was that That's like? That's a cool question, bro. I love you. It's three. It was three different stages. So uh, I won the first, and I just submitted my song. I didn't think it would go anywhere, and uh, I submitted Truman Show and the Beatles, and. Uh, uh, a couple months went by. I submitted them before uh, uh, New Year's Eve. And then uh, they hit me up around March and were like, hey, you won the grand prize of the John Lennon songwriting competition. And I was like, wow, that's cool. And I, it was a three-day-old email, so I was like, what? <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. I was like, what? And, you know, it was bad. And so uh, I hit them back, and I was like, that's cool. And they sent me everything. And, well, they're in the process. I've probably got a good 89% of the grand prize stuff that I won. It was $10,000 worth of recording studio equipment. So I got pretty much all the sauce. I got to get me a new, I got to get a Mac or something because my PC is not going to cut it. And uh, But pretty much everything else, I'm pretty much going to be able to be a Kanye West of Albuquerque, bro. Because <laughs> I'm going to start making beats. They gave me a Casio keyboard. They gave me two, uh, they gave me a Les Paul uh, uh, electric guitar and an acoustic guitar. I'm going to have to learn, bro. The music game has never seen me like this, bro. I'm going to become... I'm, I'm manifesting it on your show. I'm going to be the Kanye West of Albuquerque, bro. Oh my God, see I am going to do some crazy shit, bro. That's awesome. Cause, and, and what's weird, and I'll say it. I'll let my nuts hang on the show, bro. It's crazy. I, I was driving down uh, Manal one day. Manal in uh, Wyoming. And I'm a real spiritual dude. I was kind of... I needed that push. And I was like, what's that one... Uh, What's that one artist that you just relate to? Because, like, I listen to everything, bro. Everything. I, I used to be a stickler about country, and now I like it. But what's really weird is, like, I, I really kind of, like, asked John Lennon on some spiritual business. I just was like, I need that push. I need that, like, that push. And what's weird is the universe gave me that. And it was so strange how it worked because, like, I didn't win in, in going back to the three stages. The second stage, everyone had to vote. And I know you were one of the many voters that were voting every single day. And I appreciate everyone that was voting during that. And uh, that was the second thing. They, um, If I would have won those, I don't think I was ready to, to win the, the next two. Because when I see what Banded Future did, it was really crazy. Because they were posting up at... Uh, uh, events you know state fairs stuff like that with booths saying hey vote for me vote for me it, it lit a fire under me bro because you know i was i had so many i had people coming and stopping to me in central hey i'm voting for you every day bro and i really thought i had it in the bag but it just shows you what that extra amount of hustle does because i didn't get to the second round of the three and what was crazy was if i would have won that then it goes on to the uh the year the uh the the song of the year and whoever wins that, it's all 12 genres against each other. And whoever wins that gets $20,000. And so, you know, the way I saw it, I won, uh, I don't really know how the lottery works. I've been saying this analogy horribly. But it's like I won the million dollars out of the lottery. I didn't get the $69 million. I didn't get the, <laughs> uh, you know, I yeah. won them, I'm the guy that got the million dollars. But I'm happy, you know. Yeah. I'm really happy. And I feel like it was John Lennon giving me it because I feel like right now in my life, I would have done something crazy with that 20000 I would have invested in it done something good but I, mu- I must have not been ready for it but i must be ready to learn guitar learn the keyboard make my own beats and become the potential albuquerque 
uh, Kanye West. Well, bro. that dude, that mindset is so fucking important. Oh right? yeah, right. Because if you just focus on the negative, because oh yeah, if you look, if you're looking at it, glass half empty. Yeah, you lost two things. We only you only won one. Yeah. Oh, you know what I mean. But no, yeah. it's like you have equipment now that you wouldn't have had if you didn't submit anyway. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And B, yeah, you now have uh what yeah, you have two two avenues to learn now, guitar and piano. Mm -hmm. And then I guess the third in itself is making your own beats and like Straight perfecting up. that. Mm -hmm. So you know, as an artist, as a I mean just an ingester of a lot of music, when and then you look at like is entertainment. I don't know what the fuck happened after COVID, but oh, entertainment yeah. in Albuquerque right now is exploding. Oh yeah, it's fucking exploding. It's great. Bro. I don't. I don't know what's going on. I'm not complaining. Obviously, know, I'm. Just, I'm just like, what the hell is going on? Straight up, man. And so, what for you is separating between like you spoke about? Okay, yeah, it's like you've got people telling you that I'm voting. You're on your. I see you on social media all the time. But then like, yeah, you see it. These people have booths at state fairs dedicated to a online contest. Yeah. So what do you think, like, when you listen to local musicians here or you look at this entertainment in general for you whenever you're trying to study this and learn, what's separating the different levels of people? Kind of like for me, I, I, I know I need to put more time into this than mm -hmm. I am, right? It's just something I kind of just expect. And yeah. it's a, time management's a real skill. Yeah. Um, but I'll listen to, like, because I know that I've got, um, I've got, like, great equipment. Mm -hmm. And I've got like a good platform to go off of. I'm very thankful for it. Yeah. But like, I'll listen to like the audio quality of mine. Yeah. And I'll listen to another. I'm like, okay, well, I'm better than that one. Yeah. But I'm not like, not even like um, celebrity status, yeah. but like the the sheer quality of the audio. It's like, I'm not as good as like a Rogan, maybe. I right. Feel you. So it's like, what's making his mixing better than mine? So I'm trying to like learn that. So yeah. what do you doing like to take yourself to the next level like what do you find separates that so one thing that's crazy that's a good question man because like the way that i see it is a uh, a lot of artists lack constructive criticism i i've always surrounded myself around a lot of good people that are able to tell you hey you should do this better but in a really subtle good way you know not in a way where you're gonna feel messed up or you're gonna feel bad about yourself or you're gonna feel you know like uh, self-conscious about it and i think that uh especially in the time that we're living in it's it's really easy to make art just out of anything and so what's cool is and like you said i'm a, and that's cool you said it because i am a half a glass half full type of dude when i see people like that in the different tiers of like entertainment i'll kind of see it like different levels of dreams and, you know, like, I'll respect anyone's dream when, you know, like, when someone comes up to me at my studio, you know, at, at Arrow's Independent, shout out my boy Arrow, you know, and someone will come up to me that's not as good after me. I got to look at the glass half full because that that's not only a dream, a soul, and an artistic vision getting out. It might just be, you know, one man's Picasso is another man's, you know uh drawing on a napkin but you know it's <laughs> yeah. and it's kind of crazy bro and i learned that too with john lennon because most of his art is kind of simplistic but when it comes to that bro and like what separates me is i just have really good intentions because most of these people want money and i know you do it for fun i know you do it for the artistic vision and uh i think that that's what is booming in albuquerque right now is everyone's on the same level nobody's real well there is a lot of people trying to do it for the money and a lot of people getting greedy but a lot of these people are dream getters and go-getters and people that are really putting in work because like it's, it takes a lot of of time effort and determination to go where you've been bro like this is crazy this is my first time being in your new studio and it's crazy bro Thank the glow you. up is crazy that. and so that's kind of how i see it bro and and see one thing too is i've been shelved so much as an artist bro this is probably one of the best years that i've gotten the roses that i deserve and when it comes to like that different level of the the tier of uh of uh entertainment bro i'm telling you like I, that's how i see it is you know everyone's on that different dream level and uh you know, it, it gets deep, bro. It gets deep. But, you know, what separates me from a lot of people is just my mindset, bro. Like you said, because, you know, I don't really go into this. I can be cocky at times, but, you know, everyone's doing what I did either before when I needed help or, you know, 
I'm doing something that they wish they could. And it's kind of crazy because it's, it's, it's one or the other, you know? Well, I mean, there's a difference between being cocky and being confident. Yeah. There's a huge difference. Exactly. Because cocky, you're acting like a cock. Yeah. And you're acting like a dick. Yeah, yeah. You're a dude that's walking around thinking you're the shit. Straight up. But you have nothing to back it. Mm-hmm. Confidence is, I know what I'm doing. Yeah. I'm very controlled in what I'm doing. Yeah. And I know that I'm here for a reason. The podcast is brought to you today by OrganicPriceBooks.com. Uh, I love comic books. That is absolutely no secret to any of my friends, family, or listeners. And right here is just some of the comics that I have either bought or gotten sent to me by the fine folks over at Organic Price Books. As you can tell, they have a wide selection from DC, Independent, Marvel, and they have become the number one spot for everything omnibus, oversized hardcover, or just general collected editions. No matter what you want, they've got it. Go to their website and at checkout, use our promo code, just my name, Noah, N-O-A-H, to get additional discounts on top of what they already offer, which ranges anywhere from 30 to 50% off. OrganicPriceBooks.com, use my promo code, Noah, N-O-A-H, and start reading comics today. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Um, there could be confidence negatively for sure. Yeah. It's like I cheated my way to the top. I know what I'm here. I'm confident yeah. no one can like knock me down. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if you've been watching the boys at all. Do you watch that show? No. Oh, dude. It. Well, it's like a fucked up version of like superheroes. It's on oh. Amazon. Check it out. It's good. Okay. But I, I'd say like an ugly version of Confidence would be like the main, like the evil Superman. His name's yeah. Homelander. He's okay. he's just a dick. He's a <laughs> fucking <laughs> he's a, ah. He's, he's a, a dick. Yeah. But the good kind of confidence is is obviously what you're exuberating, right? Yeah. What you're putting out there. What you're, and I think it's a good point that you brought up that like you need to. Not that you need to, but like, it's almost inherent that, you know, you know what you needed when you're, when you're coming, I mean, we're all still coming up. We're all yeah. still working to do something, but like when you were first starting, you know what you needed. Yeah. And whether or not someone helped you out or gave you pointers, gave you tips, gave you whatever, you are now stepping into the position where you can start to help people. Yeah. Do you feel that? Oh yeah. Cause I see it. Exactly. Yes. Cause I see that. Exactly, bro. Oh, like I even mentioned probably on one of the last shows, bro. Like, I I I'm uh, I experienced that with Victor's song, with my song about my dad. You know, when people came up to me and were like, "Yo, this song helped me," like because my dad died this way, you know, through drugs in certain situations. Like, yeah, that was that was the bro. You hit the nail on the head with that one. Well, and it, he, it really is on a different level like that, and you know, especially after covid you know like one thing you know i and i was being real pretentious the other day because somebody said uh somebody that performed last night said i know it's felt like 150 years because of covid and i was like why'd they bring up covid you know like i was kind of like but some people including myself because i still have a couple covid phobias and weird things but you know like the the entertainment people were they needed that you know yeah. Like they needed that. They needed to get out. In what they way? They needed it. Just, oh, just get out and perform and yeah. like mm-hmm. like do their thing. Exactly. Yeah. You know, New exactly. Mexico New Mexico's been on the downturn for a long fucking mm-hmm. time. Yeah. Um, and I think just like any other place, like politics completely removed, but any other place, COVID just like accelerated yeah. that, right? Yeah. It accelerated the downturn, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, but I think there is a, I don't think it's a coincidence, but I think it's a direct correlation between the boom in entertainment that we're seeing here and then just how fucked up our state is. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think it's exactly. a direct correlation because I think people are finally starting to realize that, yeah, I mean, if you're lucky, especially in this state, and it sucks, this is a fact, but like, if you're lucky enough in this state to get a secure nine to five, or a um, a secure union job, yeah. or a secure trade job, or if you decide to go in the military, that's a whole other route. But you know, if you're lucky enough to get a secure job here, that's not fucking fast food. What else are you gonna do? You have to create your own path. You have to create Facts. your own. You have to make your own money. Facts. And I think, I mean, contrary to popular belief, because I know that we're in a hyper liberal state, and everyone thinks that. Like, I mean, God, this last place that I worked at, I, I, so I just got laid off from a job and then I picked up a new job, uh, very thankfully. Um, but the last place I worked at, man, like it was a bunch of old heads yeah. 
who are like, they're of the, especially like post COVID, they're of the mindset of like, nobody wants to work. Nobody wants to do this or that. It's like, well, technically speaking, yes, you're right. Nobody wants to work at the open jobs, mm-hmm. but you look at the open jobs and you compare it to the economy. And it's like, yo, like, like personally, I mean, I want because God, when COVID kicked off, what March and I got my first job post COVID or during the pandemic in July, I was making 1250. Yeah. And thankfully, I had some money stored in the bank. But I was like, yo, if I didn't literally have this 9000 in the bank to get me through the next... And I had to make that stretch a year. I'm making 1250 working 40 hours a week. Yeah, That is, after taxes, that is $860 every two weeks. That is nothing. Really, nothing. So how, like... So yeah, you're right. People don't want to work. But when you're advertising these jobs, they're like mm-hmm. 12 13 14 15 dollars an hour. Facts. Like, Facts. and rent, I think, like, a one-bedroom apartment now is, like, a grand. Yeah. Are you kidding me? You know what I mean? It's crazy, bro. So, I think that's a direct, a direct example of, like, why all this is booming up. Oh, yeah. Like, um, like I said, I've, I had the opportunity to speak with uh, with Buck on here, and, and me and him shoot messages back every now and again. And I've spoken to another comedian. His name's Jared. And I just see, like, I, <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if you have this problem, but I don't know if it's a problem like this occurrence where you don't know who your friends on Facebook with until you start seeing their posts, yeah. and you're like, hmm. exactly. And I, and I don't yeah. comment very much. I don't mm. really do all. I just kind of lurk. And yeah. I'm like, interesting. Yeah, <laughs> interesting. Okay, yeah. so I see like um, they're opening a brand new comedy club here. Yeah. I don't know if you heard about that. Or oh not. yeah, of course. Yeah, dry yeah. heat. Yeah, yeah. I'll be there. Of course. I'll be there next Saturday night. Nice. I'm um, very much looking forward to that. Um, oh yeah, I'm, I'm happy for that, bro. Yeah. I think that's going to be real neat. But what's dope is like, it's being opened by comedians. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? I think that's super, super important. Oh, yeah, bro. Straight up. No, that's it's going to be a sick venue, bro. I'll probably see you there, bro. Yeah, I, ho- I hope it'll be, be good. Sick. I hope it'll be good. It's going to be a dope show. Yeah, because I think, and I think the conversation that I had with Buck really opened my eyes. Because I was like, there is potential here. Oh, yeah. But like, it's not a... Like, there's no huge hands. It's a community that has oh, yeah. to come together and put money into things. Oh, yeah. And elevate people. And, t- like, word of mouth is your lifeline here. Do you, mm-hmm. do you, do you agree with that? Oh, yeah, bro. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Well, that's what's crazy about the guy that I record with, Arrow, at Arrow's Independent Studios. He's never spent a dollar. And you can ask him about this. And I don't know if I should be dropping this, but screw it. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's good promo shit. But, uh, uh, He's never spent a dollar on promotion, bro. It's all been word of mouth. And he's probably the most booked recording studio in Albuquerque, New Mexico, bro. He, I, I tried to get, I tried to go Buddha mode the other day, had a song in my head, wrote it, got it to a nice beat, hit him up. He was booked for the next four days. That, I used to be able to get a, a, a session with him the next hour. Wow. Good and, for him. And, oh, yeah. That's my boy. And especially recording down in Old Town. Where I grew up, where my family stapled at, I was like, what? It's so cool. Especially just, oh, yeah, man. That's my boy. That's legit. Oh, yeah. Wow, that's good for him. Oh, Holy yeah. shit. So, yeah, I just I think it's interesting that all this is booming now. Oh, yeah. Um, And then another thing that I wanted to pick your brain about, because, again, I don't know who I'm friends with on Facebook until I see him posting. Yeah. And I see, like, three different people posting about this. Uh, that we're getting, or there's going to be a... A New Mexico Hip Hop Awards. Oh, yeah. What do you think? What is this and what do you think about so it? So it's been going around. Uh, shout out my boys over at Black Diamond. I know they are the yeah. ones running it. And uh, it's going to be crazy, bro. I hope that uh, I hope they see the potential in a lot of different artists because, you know, there's not only old heads that have been doing it. Like I mentioned with Vile and um, the first one, too. They're like Bamboozle, Boy Dirt, all these people that that uh paved the way for albuquerque hip-hop to people that like me that are doing it now yeah and my homie beans valentino and Bootke records and a lot of people like that and those are big names that i just dropped that i haven't dropped on the last two podcasts because beans valentino Bootke records i'd say eloquent james gov i'm friends, with, I'm friends with a couple of those you just named actually oh, funny thing yeah alex cloud maya anthony oh See, that's okay. what i'm saying I've been trying to link up with Alex Cloud. He's interesting. Yeah. I want to pick his brain. Yeah. He hit me up about a year ago, and I know he's been bouncing around the country. Yeah. Um, he's interesting. I've All checked right. him out a little bit, and I want to I want to sit down with him at some point. Hell and yeah. And have a conversation. He's he's an interesting dude. 
Hell yeah, bro. Yeah, he's cool. Um, what do you think? Because like, I mean, like it or not, there's a stigma with underground rap, unlicensed rap, where it's like if you're not these big names like Eminem or Jay Z or da 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 da, da mm-hmm. you know, and even like the bigger names now, they get a lot of shit. Yeah, they're like they're ghetto, they're yeah. violent, they're this, that, and the other. Do you think that something like this is gonna help out the the underground, the more um, unknown like rappers to like not only get out of because I feel like there's a bubble of people who know about it. Yeah, right. It's like these certain people know about it, but maybe like God, the the more the Northeast Heights, mm-hmm. they don't really know about it. Yeah, uh, the richer parts of Santa Fe, yes. they don't really know about it. Yes. And then even down to like the rural, like Bosque Farms, yeah. Clovis, yeah. Uh, Las Vegas, they don't really know about all this. Exactly. Yeah. So, do you think something like this, with the right publicity, the right promotion, you think it's gonna help? Like shoot that out. Oh yeah, bro. Well, ex- exactly. And it's pr- and it's crazy that you're feeling that vibe because one thing that we've said amongst each other in the rap community to a lot of each other, a lot of rappers to each other, is that once one of us makes it, all of us make it. And it's really crazy because a, a good example is uh, boxing with Johnny Tapia. You know, everybody wants to be Johnny Tapia. There's Johnny Tapia. There's Johnny uh, Danny Romero. I should you should beat my ass for getting his name wrong. Danny Romero. There is so many prestigious boxers that have come out of Albuquerque. Yeah. You can be Johnny Tapia. You can be Danny Romero. You can be Holly Holm. You know, like you don't always have to be Johnny Tapia. And it, you you got all these dope dope people. You know. And, uh, and, uh, I mean, the way I feel about it, man, is just these, the, the way the entertainment industry is in, in Albuquerque, it's just, it's, it's crazy, bro. I like uh, the way you said how it's taken off everything. It's, it's insane. It really is insane. And I'm glad it's happening. I want to make that exceedingly clear. Mm -hmm. I'm glad it's happening. Like, I'm glad that they're able to get this together and do an award show and like, and it's a very like formal memorandum that's been put out about it like it's not like a fucking just a post on facebook hey we're doing a show yeah no it's this is like a formal um like yeah it's a memorandum like it's it's not even like a flyer it's a memorandum it's very specific about it being a black tie event and there's entry fees to get in and that there's going to be news outlets and there's oh, going to yeah. be this, that. And it's very professional. Oh, yeah. They're going to see Notorious T pulling up with two <laughs> model bitches. Just, <laughs> with, I'm going full. They they said black t- black tie. What? Okay. Yeah. Let's and I, And I hope it works out. Let's do um, it. But I can't help but cool. think that it's an uphill battle. Yeah. Especially in Albuquerque. I well, should. in New Mexico. And the re- reason I say that is just because, again, it's stigmas, it's stereotypes, it's it's violence in Albuquerque. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. like I'll, I had a good conversation with uh, Jay Block. He's one of the guys that was running for governor. Oh, uh, nice. He lost the pre-primary because Ron Ketty took it. Um, but, I mean, you see it. You've been here your entire life, how bad the violence has gotten here. And, I mm-hmm. mean... That's a big reason I've told my chick this and I've told my friends this. Like, that's why I'm not comfortable going out anymore. Like, I don't, not that like going out is my thing anyway, but every now and again, like pre COVID, I used to go out to bars, maybe go out to like go shoot and pool at Anodyne or like go to Billy, something like that. Mm-hmm. Now, I mean, I've been in this myself with just a shootout. Mm-hmm. I just, I'm not going to put myself in that situation. Mm-hmm. Um, one uh, like rap duo that I, that listens to pretty often the Suicide Boys. I listen, oh, yeah. I listen to them. Yeah. They're coming in like October, yeah. September, some shit. Yeah. They're going to Slutta. Mm-hmm. And I was talking to my chick about it. And I was like, because she likes them. Like, yeah. do you want to go? And we were kind of discussing it. And I was like, here's why I don't want to go. Uh, I'm afraid that there are going to be some fucking idiots there that listen to that music and they're going to fucking start something. People are going to be drinking. I feel you. I man. mean, you've been to Slutta. That yeah. security is shit. I feel you. <laughs> Come on now. That's a kid. How easy is it to get a gun in a Slutta? You yeah, know what I mean? How's he? And even not even if you get into the venue, you bring mm-hmm. it to the parking lot. Bullshit happens. People start. People don't. I'm not saying fighting's a good thing. Yeah. But people don't fucking throw hands in the city anymore. People they shoot don't. each other. Yeah, you're right. Like you can't if you are over the age of 21 and you don't have a felon or a felony, and you walk outside your house without a handgun. I, I think that's very silly. <laughs> Personally, I, feel you, man. I think that's very silly. I feel you, man. Like it's not a good move. So like. Do, I, how do you think? Am I right in saying that? Like, do you think it's an uphill battle to like get the publicity out there, get more than just 
you know, the people who already love it, get new people coming in because you want to get as many people as possible. Obviously. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's going to be a possibility for this go around? Of course, man. Yeah, of course. Well, see what's crazy too, man, is like the way that, Oh man, that was deep. Cause the way that things are nowadays, bro, is, you know, there are people that are afraid to go out, you know, there are people that, you know, especially with everything that's been going down gun wise and everything, I'm I'm kind of like I'm I'm torn between that subject, but I do know one thing is that when it comes to you know uh, getting it out there, like you said, I feel like it's gonna get out there one way or another, and uh, that's the cool thing about hip hop. I, I can't speak for any other genre, but hip hop has evolved into a state where it's not always the gangster shit. Yeah, it's it can be some J Cole, Kendrick Lamar. You know something, something very artistic and bigger than hip hop, and especially mathematically, how lyrics have gotten in hip hop, it's insane. But I would say that you know, growing up in Albuquerque, like how you said, both of us, it it is a problem, and and I I I, I would say, see the a good way of putting what I'm trying to say is I was afraid to say Albuquerque in my raps for so long, man, because of the weird way Albuquerque rappers portrayed Albuquerque. I agree with and, that. And I was really, really afraid to. And I never wanted, and people used to always tell me, are you from uh, uh, Los Angeles? And like, it was really weird. Like, are you from LA? Because I've got that universal sound. But I used to tell them, no, I'm born and raised here. And they would freak out. And then I really started talking to my homie Kevin. And I told him, I was like, yo, like, I want to put on for the city. And then, but I don't want to be a local rapper. I don't want to look like this. I don't want to portray that. I don't want to do that. And then he advised me. He's like, you just got to do it better, bro. You have to do it on a level to where it is appealing. You have to do it. So that's where I came up with the Duke City Drip. I came up with the the different, you know, different gimmicks that I do. I don't really have gimmicks, but they're, you know, you might see some spiritual stuff on my story. You might see some laughing stuff. Yeah, I'm a bundle of things. But that's what Albuquerque is, you know, and, and I might get emotional on my stories and I might get, you know, I might get mad on my stories, but I think that the art's going to get out there one way or another, bro. And people are going to either relate to it or they're going to have a hard time relating to it. And the, And that's one thing I've learned is that people that have different opinions usually can't relate to the situation. So that's why they have a hard time. Well, it's kind of crazy. Well, then how hard of a point do you think that is to get across to a lot of people, whether you're creating stuff or not? But specifically for people, whether you're a musician, yeah, you're an athlete, you're a fighter, you know, whatever it is, yeah, um, that 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 is really good advice, especially like in our culture. Not a lot of people want to hear anymore. It's you have to do it better. Yeah. Um, like a good way that I've heard to put is nobody cares. Work harder. Yeah. Nobody yeah. cares. Mm -hmm. Like what your problems are, mm -hmm. what your worries are, what exactly. you're dealing with your personal. We all got shit we're dealing with. Yeah. Everybody. Mm -hmm. Especially today. Yeah. Everybody south of $150,000 a year Facts. has shit they're dealing with. Facts. And nobody cares. So how how hard do you think that is amongst your peers? Is it for pe Do you feel like that's a separator between people who are going to do great and people who might end up washing out? Is like they just don't want to put in the time, put in the work, or even just they don't really have it to be able to elevate to that next level. You Ooh. think you think that's a real thing? You evoke deep Buddha on that <laughs> one. So, like, some people got deep-rooted trauma from this, bro, like, from growing up in Albuquerque. And it's crazy because you might do things subconsciously that sabotage your own growth and your own success. And I feel like a lot of people do that to themselves in the music industry here in Albuquerque. And, uh, you know, like, there's people that, you know, I, you know, I'm not going to say that, but, you know, some people might be into drugs. Some people might gangbang. Some people might, and this is just from the hip-hop community, but they might get caught up into that way too much, way yeah. too much. And, and, you know, a good example are modern-day rappers that end up with gunshot wounds and, or die by gunshots and everything. They get caught up in that life. And what's crazy is, like I said before, I've usually surrounded myself around a lot of good individuals in my life, and they've always pushed me to do better and pushed me to do stuff exceed my physical capabilities because you know it's crazy bro like how i even told you people freak out when i go up on stage because it's like well how's he doing that and i do it effortlessly and i feel like you know when it goes into that bro like i feel like uh people people can self-sabotage themselves subconsciously i feel like they can 
not they can lack the energy they can be lazy it's a bunch it's a it's a bundle but the people that got that spark they're gonna do it and it's crazy because you know i've even told my homies god blesses me with the position that i see in my head if i ever go on you know too late or i mean too early like john lennon god forbid because i'm manifesting a lot of dope shit you guys you know talking to my friends that i was talking about will be better than i ever will be well, I fucking hope not. I'll tell you that. I hope well, you don't go no, too soon. No, no, no. Fuck. <laughs> no, no. That, that was just some... That was real deep. That was deep, deep, But no, deep. it's real. No, but, and, and what's but, sad you know, is like, that's... Yeah. That, that's a possibility the, yeah. in this city. Yeah. Well, see, you know, not even like that. You know, like, that's what I'm saying is, you know, uh, you know, I, I, I'm a really spiritual dude. So I feel like, you know, not unpretentiously, I feel like I really do know what's in store for me. Especially with the things that have been unfolding in my life, bro. And and when it goes back into like what we were talking about, I want to help people like that, bro. I want to help people so they see that and they eventually... Because it's going to get that way, bro. If there's going to be a Drake of the Albuquerque. There's going to be a Kanye West of Albuquerque. There's going to be a Jay-Z. It's not always going to be... Everyone wants to be the Tupac of Albuquerque right now. Everyone wants to be the Tupac of Albuquerque. And, you know, just uh, again, speaking from the hip-hop point of view, but... It's, uh, I want to be someone that can, can help those people because they, there is a lot of that, bro. There is a lot of self-sabotage and just the lack of motivation. Well, it's funny you use that comparison. Um, and I'm not exceedingly well-versed in the history of hip hop or anything by yeah. the, uh, stress the imagination, but like with that whole Will Smith, Chris Rock thing that happened, yeah. you know, a lot of arguments I saw, wait, when, yeah. if Tupac was still alive and that went down, I was like, no, yeah. Tupac would have sat in his seat and just said, okay, I'll see you exactly, later. Yeah. He wouldn't have done shit publicly. So yeah. it's, it's interesting how people associate Tupac a lot with, because not, you know, unfoundedly, but he did have a lot of violence in his life and he did have a lot of mm-hmm. ugly things, but he did, I think he was a victim of a lot of self-sabotaging and being in, just growing up in that culture. Oh yeah. But a lot of things he did try to preach was why aren't we helping each other? Why mm-hmm. Is it that, I mean, one of the most famous things that he said was like, why is it that like, was it you have like 51 homes or 51 rooms in your house when this person has none? Yeah. You have all this, like, you have all this money and these people don't. Yeah. And I think and you bring up a really good point. Like, I think a way to elevate any community is acknowledging the ugly parts of it. Yeah. Because there are violence or mm-hmm. there is violence and there is gang banging and there is like, cause, I mean, yeah. I'll watch, I'll like be flipping through my stories, I'll flipping mm-hmm. through whatever it is on social media and I see like uh, whether it's people I follow promoting artists or artists that are running ads or whatever it is, mm-hmm. and they're flashing guns, they're flashing chains, they're flashing women, this that, yeah. and the other. And I'm like, like regardless of if you have talent or not, yeah. the image you're putting out, if that's what you want to do, mm-hmm. I'm all for it. Like I think you should live your life, but you're gonna reap a certain amount of consequences. Yep. The same thing with people Facts. like people, people that gangbang. Like if you're gonna, li- I'm not about that life. I know who I am. Mm-hmm. I'm not built for prison, bro. Yep. I'm not built for prison. Hell I'm yeah. not built for jail. I am Hell not. Yeah. I am not that guy. I but you. you know, like especially like just with the way this country works and with, um, especially now post COVID and just we're. I mean, we're in a recession. They haven't officially announced it, but yeah. we're in a recession. Mm-hmm. We are entering a depression. Yeah, and I think those words are interchangeable. Mm-hmm. But with the way things are going, and just what's available to people, like. Am I ever going to say that, that being choosing violence, gangbanging, dealing drugs, killing people, is that a good thing? No. But I can see the breadcrumb trail that leads someone to that. Yeah. And I'm never going to judge. But again, what I'll say is if you make certain decisions, you're going to reap certain consequences. Definitely. And what's sad is like, I Definitely. want to, I want to see Albuquerque succeed and oh, yeah. I want to see New Mexico get better. Mm-hmm. I mean, I wouldn't have sat down with a politician if I didn't want to, because I fucking hate politicians. I feel you, man. Like I'm very open about that. They knew you. that going into it. like my buddy. The reason that whole, that whole thing I set up was like, my buddy is on their PR team. Yeah. I think he got uh, like the actual dude block. He got set up on a podcast but it's super like shitty quality and they didn't tell me who it was and not that I really care, but it's like, it was going to be audio only over zoom on their phone. Oh damn. 
Yeah, and they're like, no, 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 no. My buddy, my buddy found out. I was like, no, 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 no. Yeah. And he called me with like 18 hours notice and was like, hey, do you have time tomorrow at 10 a.m.? I was like, yeah, well, I have, I have time now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, not really, but now I do. Yeah, I'll work it in. Yeah. yeah. So, and that's why I sat down with him and I was like, dude, like we are in a fucked up position. And now mm-hmm. I just like I see, I just see, my point is I just see what's going on around me. Yeah. And I'm like, I want this place to succeed. I want mm-hmm. communities to succeed. But it is tough when there are, I mean, there's always bad apples in every bunch, but like there needs to be a collective like, hey, if you want to be a part of that, that's fine. But like the rest of us, that was cool in the 90s, dude, or like the 80s. Like, and the people who did that, do Mm -hmm. you see fucking Ice Cube or Jay Z or any of these, Eminem, you see any of these people gangbanging now? Yeah. Flashing guns and all this stuff? No, they're not violent anymore. They're actually. It's funny, um, people like those bigger from what I've seen, those bigger rappers like they talk about it, but they're not. They're actually like openly anti-violence. Yeah, and they're anti-drugs and they're Facts. anti like you know whatever. Yeah, you know I, I just think it's just and I think it just comes with maturing. Mm-hmm. So I think a lot of like what our generation can learn is like these people that you idolize, do not idolize like if you're 25 years old, 22 years old. Do not idolize the twenty-five to twenty-two or yeah, twenty-two to twenty-five year old Ice Cube, yeah, or Eminem or Slim Facts. Shady at that point. Facts. Idolize the fifty-year-old, the the forty, fifty, sixty-year-old now. Facts. The dude who's learned all his shit. Yep. Mm-hmm. Look at that person. Facts. Because why are you just gonna keep making the same mistakes these people have already made? Oh yeah, exactly, bro. The road to millions is not guaranteed to anybody. Exactly. Exactly. Which is scary. For this city specifically, and I'm just, I don't know, dude. I get, I get worried about the city a lot. I'm definitely, yeah. man. Me too. Yeah. Me too. Yeah, I'm doing everything in my power to help the community, bro. Whether it's through my lyrics, through my actions, through anything that I'm doing. I'm trying to do, I'm trying to be that light too, bro. Because, you know, it's, it's, I was talking to a good friend the other day about it. And, you know, he was seeing Albuquerque very beautifully. And, you know, it's just somebody who, uh... You know, I love Albuquerque. I, I view it beautifully too. But it's one one thing that he did say was he thought that the crime problem wasn't bad. And I <laughs> I had to I had to debate him on that. And what well, were his points? Just fair if fair is due. But probably like, just you know where he lives. So yeah, I, where know, does he we, live? Well, see, that's what I'm saying. It wasn't. Uh, it was a quick conversation between a. Yeah, I he was he was a good friend of mine, but uh, I would say upper upper class type individual definitely got a good income and uh i would say that you know some of that is definitely shielded off from a lot of people yeah you know and you know and one thing even being you know little albuquerque thugster i've only been to one mansion party here in quote-unquote mansion party here in albuquerque and you know that was a crazy experience in and of itself you know you know i've seen gated communities around albuquerque this had three I had to, yeah, it was, it was a big, it was a big one, yeah, and it was for a Super Bowl party with, uh, yeah, it was a good one, it was a good party, and, uh, you know, that was, that, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy out here, bro, how, yeah. but, um, uh, I, I kind of lost, well, no, you're just talking about how you've, <laughs> oh, yeah. you've seen a lot of different sides of the city, you've seen yeah. a lot of different, oh, yeah, 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 but see, that's what's crazy is, um, you know, uh, going, yeah, I remember what we talking about, man. My bad. <laughs> the, uh, the, my homie that, uh, mentioned that he had a couple good points, but, you know, may, mainly because, you know, there's some people that I'd say, especially in this day and age, people are very selective on their news. They're very selective on their outlook on things. They're very selective. Or I should say subjective. That's a way better term. They are very subjective on their news, uh, everything. And uh, I would say that his points were that, you know, it's, it's, you know, and it's, it's what a lot of rappers say too. It's the people, not the place, but, you know, uh, that it's a good point, but at the same time, you know, you there's there's got to be those influences, you know. Yeah. There's got to be that drive. There's got to be that, you know, like even when I grew up, there, you know, same generation as you. It's really crazy seeing how things unfolded, because you know, I I would love to, and I'm going to write a book, but you know, just how everything, you know, 
was uh, we thought things was were bad back then, or you know we thought our parents were telling us things were bad. And that's why one thing I've I've told my grandma, you know, from an unpolitical, unbiased point of view, the state of the country is crazy right now, and you can't tell me any different that we need a president from an unbiased. I know Democrats and Republicans that feel the same way. We need a president. That's worth something, bro. We need a president right now. Yes. See, exactly. Not to be a dick. Exactly. But did you see that Biden ate shit on his bike today, bro? No, you I didn't see that yet. I haven't seen dog. it yet. Oh, Are we gonna my, watch this oh live, my bro? god. Oh my yeah, god. so he was doing something down in Delaware. They had some mm-hmm. event and he was let me try and find the fucking video because I have the pictures. Um, okay, here we go. <laughs> oh my god! No! <laughs> he paused in time for a second, bro. Bro. And I feel so bad. Oh my like, god! Like a part of me, a part of me feels so bad. But then also, I'm over here. Like he can ride a bike. Yeah. So not only that, who's letting him ride a bike? <laughs> so first of all, second of all, somebody got this picture of him. Oh my god! And they got that picture of him. Oh. And God. then, and then, this is why Joe Rogan's the GOAT. Oh right there. That is why Joe Rogan <laughs> is the GOAT. That's fucking awesome. <laughs> Joe Rogan's that the GOAT. That is fucking amazing. And let it be known, America, that <laughs> this is the exact reason what we're saying is you should not laugh at the president of the United States like that. No, you shouldn't. You no, should like, not. You need a president that can ride a bike. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, you know why Donald Trump never got his ass on a bike? Because he can't ride a motherfucking bike. <laughs> exactly. His big orange ass exactly. cannot ride a bike. That's why exactly. he didn't do it. Why do you think fucking Obama exactly. played basketball every week on camera? Because exactly. he had to do two things. He had to maintain the black fucking uh, demographic and to show <laughs> that the young president was worth something. Exactly. Because we hadn't had exactly. a young president in a very, very long time exactly. like Obama. So, exactly. oh my God, dude, it's just, we, no, but back to your point, in all seriousness, we do need a president that is living and breathing and yeah. viable and mm-hmm. not on like, cause it's funny when you watch like, you watch any like press conferences he's giving now, yeah. or you watch him like publicly speak during the campaign trail. Mm-hmm. It's a mess. Oh, yeah. It's, oh, he's, he's tripping over his own words. Oh, yeah. But then you watch his debates with Trump, mm-hmm. and he's sharp as a tack. Yeah. So it's like, you're going to exactly. tell me they're not giving him uppers, and they're not giving him vitamins yeah. and copious amounts yeah. of amphetamines? Oh, yeah. Are you kidding me? Emperor uh, Palpatine mode, bro. <laughs> Just hooked up all fucking... <laughs> well, because, like, look, I hate comparing anybody to Hitler, but, like, I don't know how much history you know about, like, what Hitler did to himself during oh, yeah, World War exactly. II. Yeah, exactly. So, the amphetamines, the vitamins, yeah. all that stuff. You're telling me they don't have this dude on a steady vitamin drip? Yeah. I mean, we exactly. watched... Again, we watched Trump get COVID and beat it in three days when his diet is exactly hookers and McDonald's. Are you kidding me, bro? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Holy shit. So that it was a good one. Like, yeah. Come on. Um, no, I feel you, man. But, I feel you. No, it, we it, politically speaking, like even that was a good one. <laughs> that was a bar. Thank you. Well, politically speaking, even if you bring it down to like the state level, and you bring it like when we were growing up, we were kids under like Bill Richardson. Yeah. People didn't like him. People knew he was corrupt. Yeah. But if you compare, and this is like an opinion that I had, and I've ran it by some older folks that were around that were like adults mm-hmm. during that time. If you look at the attitude towards the governor then, and you look at the attitude towards the governor now, completely don't different. get yeah, don't get me wrong. Like there's people who like Grisham, and there's people in that corner, and we know they all live in Tanawan. But <laughs> I mean, for real, right? They all live yeah, in Tanawan. They exactly. live in the upper parts of Santa Fe. Exactly. But the average, like, let's say, let's say, like, independent New Mexican, yeah. all the way to the Republicans. There is a palpable hate for Grisham that I don't even, that didn't even reach Richardson. Yeah. And it's ridiculous. Yeah. It's absolutely insane. And I just, now that we've got, because in November, 
it's going to be Ronchetti versus Grisham. Yeah. Dude. Shit show. I don't think the weather... Like, I'm trying right now. I'm going to reach out on Monday because I've got contact info yeah. to see if I can get him on the podcast. That would be cool. Yeah, I'd That'd like really to. Cool. Well, I want to pick his brain. Like, objectively yeah. speaking, I just want to yeah. pick his brain mm-hmm. because... Of course, I, I've I've listened because I did research on Block, obviously, but I'm just like, okay, well, I want to see what they're... If we have time, we didn't have time to get to it, but like, if we have time to get to like the uh, the Republican opponents, I want to see yeah. what they have to say. Mm-hmm. And dude, I, for better or worse, Rocketti and Block, they're like mini Trumps. They are. I feel they, you. they run on like the same you. the same like platforms as Trump. Yeah. And I don't know mm-hmm. that a mini Trump or a, such a like a very corner Republican yeah. is gonna work. In New Mexico. I feel you, man. You know, because like, Ron- Ronchetti won off of the name Ronchetti because he's a weatherman. Like, we know his face. He's yeah. likable. He looks friendly. Like, we get that. Yeah. Right? We get that. That's why he won the primaries. But I don't know if that's going to beat Santa Fe. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it's a sad fact because, one, oh, yeah. and that's one of the things, like, I was actually kind of down for Block because, mm-hmm. like, and I did end up voting for him. Yeah. Um, not because he was on the pod, but, like, researching his stuff, listening to him speak. He, uh, and even, like, oh, I can say this now because he's out of the race. Mm-hmm. He admitted to me a little bit on camera, but off, he's not a Republican. He yeah. was an independent, but he mm-hmm. recognized that the independent party's not going to do shit. Yeah. And that they're not even going to be on the primary ticket. So mm-hmm. he's got to be on the Republican side and you, you know how it goes. Exactly. Yeah. But like, exactly. I don't want just this, like, and one thing I strongly disagree with him on was like, he was going to go in into office and just signing off executive orders, not really use the system, not really get Democrats on there, not even try to get Democrats on our side. Yeah. It was just, we're going to use fucking executive order. And that's what fucking Trump did. Mm-hmm. And no one wants to talk about it. But that's what Biden did. Mm-hmm. Biden signed more executive orders in his first 100 days than fucking Obama, Trump, and George W. Bush did mm-hmm. collectively. Exactly. Which is ridiculous. Yeah, I know. It's bad. Like, what, what, in bad. what universe, no matter how you feel about the other person or the other side or the other aisle, in what universe does it make sense to repeal literally four years of any progress oh, yeah, man. on a what to make a point yeah man like is that the hill you want to die on it's bad bro it's so bad and then you know like i was gonna make a good point too that the systemic corruption in new mexico politics is just ridiculous yeah because you know you brought up richardson and i did my homework on that boy good lord (laughs) epstein epstein bro i didn't didn't want to bring it up until you did yeah the worst individual Ever like he bro, had the a ranch in San Bohemian Fe, Grove, bro. I know you're on that level. <laughs> He's fucking weird, and no one time. And then, and bro, and then what's even funnier is I made keep the going. Meme. I'm just gonna check the cameras. Keep oh, going. I got you. I'm the one that made the meme, and I I'll show it to you here in a few. I made the meme, and someone else shared it. I wish I could have gotten credit. Michelle Lujan Grisham fondled a dude's balls for sixty bands. Sixty thousand dollars. Michelle Lujan Grisham fondled that man's balls, and no one talks about it. So nobody talks and about. There it. were two scandals actually. Did you know about that? No, yeah. I only heard about the the one I just mentioned. Yeah, there were two scandals. The bigger one made like there was one that made that we we're talking about. Yeah. There was like sixty gram uh, settlement, and there was another yeah. one, and I forget what she settled for. But there were two settlements, and they amounted to over a hundred grand, dude. God damn! What did she? What's the other one, bro? Same, same thing. Sexual harassment. I don't know if she grabbed that, grabbed the crotch or not. That was, that's how damn. I started that podcast. I was like, man, you know what? I was doing your homework, homework on you, and uh, because he has a speech where he calls her a, uh, a the crotch grabbing witch in Santa Fe. <laughs> And I was yeah. like, all right, like I get sound yeah. bites. And that's the other thing too about yes. Republicans now. They're all about sound bites. They're yeah. all about like, oh, yeah. because what Trump did, yeah. you know, the build the wall, yeah. you know, drain the swamp, you know, that was his thing. So yeah. I was like, man, uh, I, I, and I thought that's all I thought it was. I thought it was only a catchphrase. So I opened yeah. with that and I was like, man, that's a bold way to put in a, <laughs> in a, in a speech. Yeah. And he goes, well, I mean, it's true. Like dead in the eyes. If, in the first four minutes, he goes, it's true. 
And he, like, yeah. breaks down these two instances, like, in detail with the numbers and with, like, the dates. And I'm like, oh, you believe it. Okay, that's fair. Good Damn. for you. You now have the right to call her a cross-grabbing queen. Yes. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> that's so factual, bro. But anyway, oh back gosh. to Richardson. Yeah. The corruption, I mean, I, mean, I don't know anything before that, but the corruption was, like, amplified yeah, back bad. then. Bad, bad. Yeah. 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 The more it, I do my research, the more I'm just like, fuck that guy. Well, what I think is hilarious, too, is so back in 2004, 2003, like around there, it was before 2010, I know that, Alex Jones, he snuck into Bohemian Grove. Yeah. You know about that? Mm-hmm. He sneaks in there, takes yeah. videos, they kick him out, mm-hmm. and that blows up, but it gets squashed. Yeah. And then again, like a little bit after 2010, um, they get exposed again. Mm-hmm. And I forget who talked about it. But they're like, oh, no, we're just out here to blow off steam. It's a joke. Ha, ha, ha. It's like, yo, we have footage of you guys in black cloaks, lighting off fires, worshiping a giant owl, bro. Exactly. Exactly. Like, what are we talking about here? Is baby blood that far off? (laughs) <laughs> you know what i mean straight up yeah. like how is bill Richardson? like bill richardson he just went on um some one of those corny ass late night talk shows i think it was like james corbin or something yeah he you, just did he just did it like a week ago and dude like he can still speak like he's old his he's got a little bit of a southern draw to him still but he's yeah. and he's still got like that old man well, you know, just how they speak. They're yeah. old. They're 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 literally their jaw muscles don't work right anymore. <laughs> their vocal cords yeah. are like old guitar strings, exactly. right? So it takes a little bit. Yeah. But he's still sharp. Yeah. So it's like maybe the baby blood is not that far off. <laughs> you know what I mean? I feel you, bro. It's like I feel you. And it's just it's it's scary. Yeah. Um and then now we look at Grisham where and this was brought to my attention, and I researched it, and it's legit. Um, it's not just a talking point, shockingly. Um, we know how much both political sides lie, but yeah. like, we have more, um, like, what do they call like, uh, like cabinet positions or whatever, yeah. or like the people that help the governor, right? Yeah. There are more positions of that in Santa Fe than there are in the White House. Damn. Yeah. It's just Grisham hiring her friends, giving them these 80 to, I think, the top person made like 120 grand 100 grand or something like that just give them these top paying jobs and she's like hey you're you're set for four years you better save your money like i think what and like like her or not i think Susana martinez left them with like 1.2 mil in the bank and they blew through it 18 months damn of like excess money. Like they already had like their million dollar budgets here, yeah. 10 millions here, 15 million here, mm-hmm. uh, a couple hundred grand here. Like they already had money. Yeah. It was like, you have an oh shit fund. No, it was less than eight. It's like six months actually. Six to eight months. Whoa. Yeah. It's like you have an oh shit fund of like 1.2 mil and you blow through that inside a year. Yeah. So it's like, where'd all that go? <sighs> that go- <laughs> yeah. That goes into the rat race, bro. Because when it comes into, I mean, that goes into what we were just talking about. If they put more money into education, if they put more money into different shit, and they say they do, but you know, you know, just as well as me that there is some weird shit going on, and it's really crazy, bro. Because I'm, you know, America in general, but Albuquerque, bro. Like it's, it's, we need that, that extra. Like I don't, I know, I know you're going with this, yeah. and I agree. Like I don't. I'm not a Republican. I'm not. I'm certainly not a fucking Democrat. I think there's a. I think there's a strict difference between a liberal and a leftist. Yeah. Now, anyway, right? Oh, like yeah. The leftist is like are like the crazy, mm-hmm. like Antifa, give five year old hormone blockers. Yeah. There's fifty nine thousand <laughs> genders yeah. and like all that. Like the extreme shit. I think is the leftist. But I'm not a conservative. I'm not a liberal. But, and I don't believe in big government because we are now a product of big government. I don't think anybody can argue that. This whole country is a, now a product of almost two years. Yeah, of two years of big government. Yeah. Right? But New Mexico is in a state where we need money. We need big government to come in, pull us out of a hole, and then hopefully we don't fuck it up again. Exactly. Hopefully. Exactly. But it seems to me, and... You know, they could be considered conspiratorial or whatever, but it just seems to me that they want to absolutely crash the dollar 
right? Put mm-hmm. put down this entire country and then yep. start like put the poor states like us mm-hmm. put us literally into a welfare state where mm-hmm. we need money from the government. Exactly. And because look, like not everybody is fortunate enough to have a government job or to have a good union job or a good trades job. It's just a fact, whether it's because of their own choices or not. Yeah. So facts. whenever we get to a point where automation completely takes over and, you know, all these people are out of work, truck drivers are out of work, fast food workers are done, what are they going to do? Right, they're gonna need money, and the government's gonna sweep in and do it, and then now you're dependent completely on the government. And it's sad. It's really fucking. Like, did you see that the uh, the Federal Reserve they did two big. They said two big things this past week. They raised the interest rates. You see that? Damn. So they hiked up the interest rates uh, three quarters of a point, which is the biggest hike since 1995. Yeah. And now they're like, well, we're gonna look into. Uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, <sighs> and they even like it's like they're not hiding it anymore. They mm-hmm. literally said to find so this, they're gonna look into that into cryptocurrencies. I'm like, this is like a um, like a bullet points of it. Yeah, they're gonna look into cryptocurrencies, but they literally said so we can um, make a centralized banking system. Yep, it's like, fuck, man, they're not even hiding it from us anymore. <laughs> Straight up, man. Straight up. No, it's it's going to get wild out here, bro. It's really going to get wild out here. And you know what's crazier, too, is like, you know, the more places you go, they don't accept cash. The more places you go, they don't give you change. And it really is just, it's it's something bigger than what people think it is, bro. It really is. It's not just, oh, we don't accept cards, you know? People really just don't understand that because they are not, I guess, educated in that sense. But, bro, it's it's scary out here right now economically, bro. It's really on some crazy shit. Well, there's and, a there's a video of Post Malone from like five six years ago. Yeah, and he's smoking a cigar. He's got his guns around him. He's a, yeah. he's a huge two way advocate, which yeah. I think is hilarious, That's right? Awesome. I think it's hilarious. And he uh, he's smoking a cigar, maybe a cigarette. I don't know. And he's chilling. He's got a couple like uh, handguns, and he's got assault his AR fifteens. Yeah. And it's all like none of them are loaded. None of them are whatever. He's he's very like conscientious about it, right? Yeah. But he's sitting there. And he's talking about like the end, like how the governments are gonna collapse in and like basically take over the the countries. Mm-hmm. And he goes, he, "Yeah, he's smoking a cigar. He's smoking." He goes, "Wait till they come for your fucking cards when they shut off your credit cards and they shut off your debit cards. You can't get to your money." I think I remember that. Yeah. Oh, you're fucked, man. You're yeah, fucked. Man. And I think about that sometimes, and I'm like, like I remember during COVID, I was like, I think I need to go to the bank and pull all my money out of the bank. Yeah, I'm kind of fucked. I mean, I didn't, yep. but I was like, fuck, man, like. I mean, we shit ourselves over toilet paper, bro. I know what you're talking about, bro. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. I told my homegirl last night working security at the El Rey that uh, and when when the world ends, me and her will be in the same tribe because she calls the uh, Esleta Amphitheater the Journal Pavilion. Because it's the Journal <laughs> fucking Pavilion. Yeah. Like Anybody that I know, I don't know what you call it, but I call that shit the Journal Pavilion. It's been the Hard Rock Amphitheater. It's been... You know, and so I, I yeah. just to add a little light to the conversation, but no, I feel you, bro. That's that's crazy because yeah. fucking wow, it really is gonna get that bad. And that's the crazy part too is the more I see how things unfolded, it's uh, things are gonna get worse before they get better, bro. That's assuming they get better. I want things to get better. I want things to get better. I too. I think they will, but like it's it is scary when you see the types of things that the government is putting forward. Oh yeah. You know, I think if America could find the spark of, and I know, and see, <laughs> I, I know that this is going to sound really cheesy and cliche, but I do a lot of research and I read a lot. And if they just, if we could just rekindle that spark from the, uh, I mean, things are better now and worse in a lot of ways, but. If we could just get that real patriotism back, bro. Yeah. No, I agree. That real patriotism. Well, I agree with that. And what's scary about that, though, is I think our government knows that, too. Yeah. And, and that's like, because I'm not, I will never say that 9-11 was an inside job mm-hmm. and that we let it, or that we, like, planned it, we made, we funded yeah. it. No. But, but, and this is declassified now. We can yeah. look it up. Mm-hmm. We now, you're able to read the documents where, like, we knew it was going to happen. Exactly. And we also knew that it wasn't um, 
like the forefront, the forefront of it wasn't Osama bin Laden and it wasn't Al Qaeda. It was Saudi Arabians. Mm -hmm. The Saudi Arabians, like they uh, orchestrated it, they funded it, but they just had Al Qaeda do it, mm -hmm. right? And then, so it's not a stretch for me anyway. Mm -hmm. It's not a stretch to to believe that they allowed it to happen, mm -hmm. and then they were like. Or like they knew it's gonna happen, and they were like, "Okay, well, we're gonna let this happen. We're gonna rally the people together. We can go into the Middle East. We can stay there as long as we fucking can. And we're just gonna mm -hmm. that war machine is just gonna churn and churn and churn, and we're gonna make so much money. And because they wanted World War Two, like exactly. like the the financial benefits of World War Two, they wanted that. But unfortunately, they didn't get that. Obviously, mm -hmm. um, I mean the corporations did, but the country certainly mm -hmm. didn't. Um, but no, I like I think the biggest help this country could get quite frankly because we have the internet right and we have there are a million different ways to get your news mm -hmm. fox cnn msnbc abc those news stations need to be fucking gutted they need, they need to be taken i co-sign that i co-sign that because it's like they are so good like the uvalde texas shooting that just happened mm -hmm. right regardless of what your stance is on gun control I have yet to see one good bit of news other than this is what happened, here's the location, here's who did it, here's who died. Other than that, I have yet to see one good piece of reporting on that from the major news outlets. It's all stoking the fire and throwing kerosene on the flames mm -hmm. of hate each other, hate each other, hate each other, keep getting divided, keep yeah. yelling at each other, but don't actually get anything done. I feel you, man. I feel you. Yeah, it's scary. No, it really is, bro. It's 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 uh I feel you on that way too hard because you know, one thing you you know, show I want I'll show it to her. I mean, when she watches it, my grandma and I love her to death and I tell her every single day that she's been conditioned by media because uh she's at a point, you know, my grandma's got a really cool mind on her, bro, and my grandpa. They're very open-minded for 80-year-olds and they're just so cool. But one thing is they are pretty, they would even uh, consider themselves now, they're staunch Democrat. And it's just kind of crazy because, uh, you know, I tell her all the time that she's a, condi and she's starting to believe me, bro. Because I don't know if I mentioned this on the last two, or, but bro, I'm telling you, when you see George Floyd, and you know, I, and I know this might even contradict some things that I said, you know, not contradict, but... You know what me and uh, Vile talked about. When you show America a black man getting his throat kneeled on for a year straight, it's going to fuck people up. Yeah. I'm a rapper, and I don't watch crazy... And I listen to shit about guns and, and crazy shit, robbing and uh, crazy shit in rap music. And, you know, that's my vice, I guess, when it comes to stuff like that, but... The media does fucked up shit to people. A yeah. year of watching a man, regardless of skin color, getting his neck kneeled on. Yep. That's going to fuck people up, especially older people and people that are very easy to condition. Very easy to condition. And I don't know. I might have said that the last, but bro, I'm telling you, it's the media. I can co-sign that 100%, especially in MSNBC. <laughs> I, I mean, and that's unbiased. Like, bro, the the fact that these... F oh, it's, it's horrible, bro. It's <laughs> absolutely horrible. Yeah, no. It's bad, bro. No, I get it. And that's and that's actually... I'm sure I said it when the last time you came through, but, like, that's the analogy that I use. Yeah. Is like, George Floyd is one guy. Yeah. He can only die one time. Yeah. He can only be murdered one time. However... That video video gets shared all over Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, yeah. God, YouTube, whatever, and then it's getting replayed mm -hmm. on all of these different news outlets, and exactly. it's getting yeah. um, airtime at all hours, especially during COVID, mm -hmm. when everyone's glued to the TV trying to figure out what's exactly. going on, mm -hmm. figuring out when things are going to open back up, when can I go do this, when is this going to happen, do we have exactly. a vaccine yet, you know, all that. Mm -hmm. You know, George Floyd only died once, but that video gets played millions of times as far as this country is concerned and the world, because we saw world protests about it. Yeah. George Floyd died 10 million times. Yeah. And like you said, that fucks with people. That gets ingrained in their head. Mm -hmm. It gets very, um, it just, it just gets like worked into their brain where it's like, I that's how you. things are. 
I feel and I and I just had I just had a cop on uh, last week because I had to just pick his yeah. brain for a bit. It's like, yo, what the fuck is going on? And he, even he's like, yeah, like policing has given itself a pretty bad name, but it's not all bad. Mm-hmm. Like not all cops are yeah. assholes, mm-hmm. which I agree with. Mm-hmm. But it's tough when like because I personally, and if you actually look at the statistics. I hate, be, I hate being that guy. Well, if you look at the statistics, actually, what's going on is... But no, like, legit, police brutality has gone down yeah. over the years. Since the mass implementation of body cameras, yeah. mm-hmm. police brutality has gone down. Mm-hmm. Police kill more white people than they kill black people. But we have a bigger access now to these body camera footages. We have more access to what's going on around us. Where It's like, there's not more of it. We just... We see it more. And I think it's, I think to a point, people need to recognize what's going on. But then it doesn't exactly help the case when you hear about, oh, you know, uh, this police officer murdered somebody, black or white doesn't, doesn't matter, but killed somebody. But don't worry about it. The police department's investigating it. It's like, yeah. dog, I'm sure you are. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, what the fuck are we talking about here? Yeah. And then, like, a real scary thing about uh, Uvalde. This is just strange. I need I need to look more into it. But but I saw these posts today. Um, okay. Uh, like new like new update, right? Texas law enforcement officials at a press conference say that they believe all the children that were shot and killed in Uvalde, Texas, were shot by Salvador Ramos, the dude, and not anyone else, i.e., law enforcement. It's weird, right? You want to read it for yourself? It's like that's a Whoa. that's a weird way to phrase that. It's like, why would you openly say that? And what other mass shooting? Like, let, let, let's look at uh, school shootings, right? In what other school shooting has any police department been like? Yeah, they were only killed by the killer, nobody else. So like, well, who else would have done it? Wow. And then what's really scary is there's, and there's like uh, people from in the department have leaked it, where there were kids in the school who had like little pocket cell phones, right? Yeah. And oh my fucking kidding, they probably had iPhones. Well, they had their cell phones, and they uh, they were calling nine one one, so they were getting the calls in, and then finally when those cops managed to get into the fucking. Uh, school. I'm sure you heard it took them yeah. 70 minutes to go in there. It's horrible, bro. A bunch of, I, I don't care what your commander is saying or what the... I, I know all about a chain of command. Mm-hmm. But that's what makes our... Supposed to make our law enforcement and our military better than that of maybe China. If your lieutenant says, hey man, you're going to go rush that hill, but you know as a sergeant that the enemy has got the coordinates of that hill and they can airstrike it at will... You have the ability to go to the lieutenant and say, hey, you're a fucking moron. We're not going to do that. Yeah. And that lieutenant's not going to shoot you on sight. In China, you talk back to your superiors, you get shot, you get replaced, and they go do and die. Yeah. That's, it's a, it's a bottom-up here, not a top-bottom. So that's, I think that's fucking disgusting. Yeah. Anyway, so when the cops finally got into these fucking idiots, they get in there, and, like, have you ever been through a school shooting, like, um, training? Have you ever been, like, a mass shooting training, anything like that? Yeah, didn't we used to? Yeah, back in school. Yeah, did like you like the little lockdowns? Well, because I went like to I went to Nimi, so I don't know like what you guys did in yeah. the public schools, like in the high schools. Yeah. Um, but like one of the things they tell you, or like one of the things they train the law enforcement officers on, is you don't fucking yell out for the victims. Yeah. You find the victims, and even mm-hmm. when you find the victims, you do you stop the threat first. Mm-hmm. You don't you don't render first aid. You don't drag people out. You literally they're taught to step over bodies. Yeah. Like, if there's a kid that's shot, you step over that body, you take out the shooter, and then you start rendering first aid. Because what if you're rendering first aid and you get shot? What's the point, right? Mm -hmm. It's a tactics thing. So again, going back to training and these idiots. Apparently, they're going down the hallways trying to find the shooter, and they're yelling out. They're like, where are you? Like, for the kids. I guess some kids in a classroom are like, we're in here. Two seconds later, pop, 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 pop. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Horrible. Absolutely fucking horrible. Um, and then secondly, uh, Uvalde, Uvalde and Uvalde police have hired a private law firm to fight against against 
being required to release body camera footage and other recordings related to the shooting. Yeah. Files could be, quote, highly embarrassing and involve emotional and mental distress. It's never a good thing when they don't want body camera footage released. Never. God damn, bro. People so, are insane. So it's tough, man. Like, yeah. I and that's why I had to sit down with that cop because he, yeah, he's a buddy of mine, but I had to like just be objective and be like, what the fuck? Like, from your someone who's yeah. in it, because I can talk shit all day long, and and that's what another thing I don't like about these fucking pundits is like they're only like whether it's Anderson Cooper or it's Don Lemon mm-hmm. or fucking Tucker Carlson, none of these idiots, like as far as I know, none of these people in these major news outlets have law enforcement experience. Yeah. Military experience, um, even, You're right? Even like political experience, they never held office. You're but right. yet, what are they going to do? They're going to give their opinion about it. That's what right. this is for. Yeah, that's what that, I'm an exactly. idiot with a microphone. Exactly, like, you know, that, straight up. Yeah. Like, if you're going to go on a national platform and talk mm-hmm. about something, you should probably have a history in it. Yeah, you know, and it just you should know your shit. It makes mm-hmm. no sense to me. So that's why I wanted to sit down with them and talk about it. Oh yeah, bro. But it's like, fuck, what's going on? Yeah. You know, like, straight up. I don't know. I just, I, it's just, it's a disgusting topic, dude. No, I feel you, bro. It's R.I.P. Tough. to everybody in Uvalde too, bro. That's some crazy shit. And what's even crazier about that is that, uh, I, you know, politics is a bitch, man. Because you know, Greg Abbott saying that fucking it could have been worse. I'm Hispanic, bro, and you know, like it's crazy because this was one of the most more predominantly, you know. Everybody that died in that shooting was Hispanic, bro. A majority of, you know, I'd say maybe a couple people were white. The rest of them were Hispanic, bro. No shit. And and that's one thing that really irked me about uh, the press conference that Greg Abbott had against that. He said it could have been worse. And I can't, there's, you know, there's just a line that you can't cross with me, bro. And that was one of them. And it just was like, you know, a, a lot of people, I even saw a TikTok of somebody wondering the psychological, you know, oh, it's things raining. Behind. Yeah, I was like, someone knocking on the door. <laughs> okay, it's raining. Repeating. No, <laughs> no, you're good. But um, I lost my. No, so uh, Greg Abbott was talking about it could oh, always be yeah, worse. Yeah, yeah. So you know, there I watched a TikTok about it, and they were, at, you know, talking about what he could have meant behind it or what he did and everything, and you know, the way I see it is he said it. It could have been worse. There's so many types. I think that's a, a great example of where we are in America. Is like, where did, how did he say it? You know, this, this, and that. Because at the end of the day, a lot of people died, and most of them were kids. And yep. that shit is horrible. And no parent should have to go through that. No kid should ever have to die like that. No, it's it's fucking absolutely horrible, bro. And for him to say that, that really just. You know, if if I could make a change, like I said, through my lyrics, music, anything to help the next, any type of politician, whether it be Democrat or Republican, have a different mindset than that for the future generations, I would love that. Well, because that's... it could have been worse. Like, that's one of the worst things I've probably heard about the Uvalde shooting is it could have been worse. Yeah, that's horrible. From their own, govern- their own governor, bro. Well, here's my thing, right? I'm a very big advocate for... Humans make mistakes, yeah. people slip up, people make mistakes, and people say things they don't mean. Yeah. And that's fair. And yeah. again, that's what this is for. Yeah. But there are there are jobs in in yeah. life. There mm-hmm. are jobs where you do not get to make mistakes. Yeah. And that's just an ugly exactly. fact. That's just an ugly fact. Um, and without incriminating myself, I have one of those jobs. If I have to do my job, I don't get to make mistakes. Just like a police officer, granted, they make a lot of mistakes like anybody else. Mm-hmm. But in theory, through training, I have a lot of friends who are cops, a lot of people who are like sergeants and lieutenants, and yep. they train. Like their job is to train and, and help produce good police officers mm-hmm. and be one themselves. They, from the proverbial horse's mouth, they recognize they don't get to make mistakes. Like, I mean, you want to hear a fucked up story about a doctor? Um, my chick's family was telling me this. They know somebody that went to a doc here in uh, a surgeon here in New Mexico, right? Yeah. They had they had something with their spleen or their small intestine, something. Well, they got cut open, right? That's the whole point. They had to get cut open and they had to like have surgery done and you know all that stuff, right? Damn. They had they had to actually get uh, invasive. Well, the fucking doctor left a scalpel 
inside the person. Inside their oh gut. Oh my god. Left a scalpel inside their oh gut. Oh my god. So bro. again, like people make mistakes, but there are instances in life where you are Whoa. not allowed to make mistakes. Whoa. So I look at what Greg Abbott said. I look at because this is my first time hearing it. Yeah. <sighs> no shit. It could have been worse. There could have been five shooters, and they could have wiped out the whole school. You, you're totally right. It, yeah, they could have fucking rolled up and just threw pipe bombs in there. You're, mm-hmm. yeah, no shit it could have been worse. Mm-hmm. North Korea themselves could have airdropped into that school. Mm-hmm. Like Saying it could have been worse is the most tone-deaf thing you yeah. could possibly say mm-hmm. about that statement. For real, man. It's like... It could have been worse, and then literally anything Mm pro-racial, anything revolving around, well, at least it wasn't the blank. You know, Mm -hmm. that's like the worst thing you can say in that moment. (sighs) Wow, that's bad. Yeah. I thought it was weird. It was weird. Again, weird. Yeah. Because again, I'm not, and people, because I have have friends that are like in the LG, I'm going to get this right, LGBTQIA+. God. There's an I now? There's an A too, yeah. Oh, wow. And a plus. <laughs> yeah, I know, bro. <laughs> oh my god, I know. I don't even know what the I don't even know what like the la- the last two. I don't know what they stand yeah. for. The I and the A. Anyway. The neoliberals need to give us a joke uh break. We're fucking <laughs> learning, okay? We're learning. But I have friends we'll in that community and I love them to death and I think they're great people. Yeah. And I have no problem with what they do. Oh yeah. But I am against certain things like bringing kids to a drag show and yeah. like sexualizing kids, yeah. and I, I oh, yeah. have a problem. I have I have a problem as much as that as I do is having a problem with like the what's it called the kid beauty pageants. Yeah. I, th- I think that's I fucked up. I was just gonna say. I that. think that's so fucked I up. I was just gonna say that. I think that's so fucked up. I was just gonna say that, bro. However, Fuck. however, we're on the same level, straight up. I do think it is at minimum. It's a little insensitive yeah. to days after a school shooting, the worst, I don't know if it's the worst school shooting, but it's the worst elementary school shooting that we've had yeah. in the country, mm-hmm. right? Um, days after that, they sign an anti-drag like drag queen bill or like an anti-trans bill or something in Texas. And it's like, bro, what are your priorities right now? Like, I get it. They're probably not doing things you don't, they're probably doing things you don't like. Yeah. That's fine. Bro, we've got 19 dead kids. Yeah, and oh your priority is like let me. This is, you can you can say your point, and I'll find the bill that Abbott signed. Um, that's fucking crazy. Wow, Abbott signed. That's insane, bro. Anti drag law. Uh, that is crazy. Well, it's like, what's your what's your goal here? Dude? Yeah, like, like whoa. Um, okay, here we go. It's from six days ago. Um, it's banning, yeah, it's banning kids from drag shows. Oh, they proposed it. I don't know if they signed it or not. They proposed it. Um, okay, that's the one in Florida. Okay. Um, oh, we have fun about DeSantis. Um, he's a funny motherfucker, dude. <laughs> you see what he said about fucking, um, what he said about Elon Musk? No. So I guess Elon Musk, he came out and he uh, openly supported, well, because he came out and said, I don't know if it was on Twitter or like what, but he openly said, like, not only am I not a Democrat anymore, I'm going to vote Republican in 2024. Wow. Like, he straight up just said that. Yeah. And then I think he said something that was pro-DeSantis. Yeah. (laughs) Smug motherfucker. DeSantis gets up there and he goes, well... Again, he has like the Trump gestures too. Yeah. It's oh, so yeah. weird. Yeah. He goes, well, uh, you know, uh, with uh, Mr. Musk, I, I, uh, I'll take any support. You know what? Any For support real. from uh, African Americans, I'll take it. It's like, bro, <laughs> bro. <For real. laughs> it's like you're not being a racist, but you're not exactly helping. For like real. we get that technically Elon Musk is African American. You technically, yes. But African American means black in this country, dog. Yeah, like, exactly. stop, exactly. stop it. But no, I, I think, I think it's a strange thing when you have one of the worst mass shootings happen, and then you sign an anti drag bill. Yeah, it's bad. It's weird. Yeah. Right. It's just weird. Yeah. Um, I don't know, and I, and I do think it's strange 
the fact that you're like on the other side of that though, I love to hear your opinion about this. I think it's strange that parents are okay. Cause like, let's be real, whether it's women dressing themselves up because it's cartoonish, Mm -hmm. these drag Queens, right? Can we agree on that? That they dress to a cartoonish level. Mm -hmm. Like you're not going to dress like that and then go to work. Mm Mm-hmm. You're not going to dress like that and go to court. Yeah. Right? So, inherently, they are becoming like caricatures of themselves. They're becoming a character. They're becoming this act. Yeah. Right? You're not... Your birth certificate does not say lady blank mm-hmm. or um, seductress whatever. Mm-hmm. Right? I don't know drag names, but yeah. you know you know what I mean? Yeah. Your, your birth certificate doesn't say that. This yeah. is a character that you've created. Yeah. And so inherently, when you're dressing up like this and you're doing all this makeup and all this hair, and if especially, again, if you want to do it, go ahead. But like especially if you're a dude doing it and you're giving yourself fake tits, you're giving yourself a fake ass, you're slimming down your waist and exuberating your hips. I mean, why are you doing this, right? You're doing it to look more fuckable. You're sexualizing yourself. Okay, that's fine. Again, live your life. Be safe about it, but yeah. live your life. But I find it strange that that happens and then parents are like, I'm going to expose my kid to it. Yeah. I mean, am I wrong for saying that? Absolutely not. In my opinion, absolutely not. Because, bro, like, I, I'm, I wanted... Bro, that's crazy you brought it up because, you know... My homie, one of my best friends, his mom, her youngest, is in pageant shows. And it's just, you can feel the creepiness, you know? Coming from an, you can feel the creepiness. It's it's nothing but a bunch of like, even for the money value part of it, it's creepy, you know? Yeah. It's absolutely creepy. The fact that they would do that and then escalate it to what you're talking about. It doesn't blow my mind in a f- fucked up way because they're already exploiting girls at that age. Do you get what I'm saying? So it's like, wow. I mean, it, it just makes me... I mean, when I hear that shit, it makes me feel really bad because, you know, not only is it wrong because these kids... Most of these parents are living out what they wanted through their kids. So right now we're talking specifically about like pageant shows, right? Well, you know, or yeah. both. Yeah, both. Yeah, you know, from going from what you're saying too. Yeah, yeah, and, and you know, uh, I because I kind of do. I'm, I'm saying that the pageant shows kind of were a gateway to that. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I'd agree with that exactly. No, for sure. And so you know, like because you know, it's it's great to to you know, it's it's. Uh, the way I see it is the more America advances and the more that we see certain types of things we've never seen before, it's going to either be, like I said, some people are going to relate to it and some people aren't. When it comes to biological things like gender, it really freaks me out that people would go that route because there's cosplay you know i've seen i there's people that go and dress up like darth vader and princess leia you know i do think that it's wrong on a lot of levels i really do and i agree with you bro because honestly it doesn't there's no place in a kid's mind to want to i i wasn't you know and i'm a dude but you know <laughs> i'm i know i'm a dude you know <laughs> I, I know i'm a dude i should say that but you know i never was you know I never really worried about being the coolest, you know, I, I never even went into the stigma of being a dude. Like I'm my own person. And, and it's crazy because you're going to see more of that on a different level. You're going to see that to people that, that can't relate, you know, a lot of these people too, you know, like I, you know, I, I, I got friends that are gay. I got friends that are transgender. I got friends that are, uh lesbian i got a bunch of friends and one thing that i can definitely say is that they're all people that they've been a a subject to persecution as well and i did see a lot of that this year with uh pride you know like that's one, one thing that i've been educated about is or being getting educated about is pride and <clears throat> when it gets into that i'm for it 
for you know for for the discrimination for you know the the history behind it i'm for it but when you get into the whole you know what you're saying and and the the kids in drag and and going that route it's absolutely horrible it's wrong and i don't i don't back it and it's something that uh I think, you know, and I don't know if they mentioned it on Joe Rogan. I heard it somewhere. I feel like I heard it on Joe Rogan. But in the end times of Rome, they were having botched sex changes. People well, were literally, when Rome was falling, there was transgenderism. Well, there was a bunch of crazy shit going on during the fall of Rome. And it's crazy how America's starting to crumble. And you start seeing these things emerge. So it's funny that you bring up the fall of Rome. And I, I cannot think of the guy who conquered Rome. I forget, I'm spacing on his names. I love using this example. But the story goes, I'm sure it's exaggerated to a point, but the story goes that this dude, like, trained up his army. They got, because they knew what, because this is back before the internet. We didn't have drones. We didn't have pictures. You know, we literally just had hearsay. It yeah. was like, what do we know? Maps were literally just like, this dude went over there. He saw this. We just got to trust him. We got to yeah. trust this is what he remembers. Here's the map, right? Yeah. And he trains up his army. This guy trained up everybody. And they're like, hey, this is Rome. This is no fucking joke. We're going to, a lot of us are going to die doing this, but we take this land and we are the big dick here. Yeah. Let's hit it. He rode his army to the gates of Rome and he was met with zero aggression. Because he opened the door, and again, it's probably an exaggeration, but they opened the gates to Rome, and there was nothing but just drunkenness in the streets, everybody was fucking everybody, and it was just debauchery. It was like Sodom yeah. and Gomorrah all over again. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I agree, like, I, like me personally, I, I, I've grown up Christian, I, I still practice the best I can, Christianity, and, but I wouldn't ever, like, shove my religious like my religious beliefs, my religious findings mm -hmm. down somebody's throat. Yeah. They didn't want it. You know, I'm not going to force someone to live their life as a Christian. However, mm -hmm. what I would argue with someone is that there are, there are certain moral principles that you need in a, in, in a country, in a community, even in like, if you want to bring it all the way down to like, um, like a tribe. Yeah. Right. In a village, you need a set of standards. You need rules. You yeah. need, um, you need, ways to live your life exactly you, humans need rules like yeah. there's a great example by um i'm sure you've heard his name jordan peterson yeah this is a great example that he gives in one of his lectures where he talks to a student and he goes this is why humans need rules all right everyone watch all right lady in the front i'd like to play a game with you and she goes okay sure and he goes all right go and she goes and he goes go and she's like what are you talking about said, exactly you don't know what to do. I'm allowing you to do anything you want, but you choose to sit still and do nothing because you have no idea what to do. I have not given you a set of rules. I haven't given you boundaries. I haven't given you left and right limits in which to play. And obviously you could argue, well, he's Jordan Peterson telling someone to go and they're just going to sit and be like, what are you talking about? Sure. It's a very shock and awe moment. But I promise you that if you go to anybody, I've done it in real life. I've done it to my friends. I yeah. fucked with them. I'm like, let's play a game. And they're like, okay, let's play. I'm like, do it. And they look at me like I'm a fucking idiot. And it's like, no, I'm allowing you to do anything you want. Yeah. But your initial response as a human is to say, well, what, what do I do? Because I have not given you the rules on which to play. Damn. And it's a strong belief that I have that like humans in a civilized society need rules. We need yeah. moral guidelines. I'm mm -hmm. not saying that Christianity is the way to go, but there are some common denominators between like Islam, Judaism, Mormonism, Christianity, Buddhism, I think even in Hinduism, where yeah. it's generally you can encompass everything and don't be a dick. Yeah. Just don't be a dick. Wow. Don't yeah. kill people. Don't fucking rob people. Don't rape people. Yeah. You know, just generally don't be an asshole. Oh, yeah. And then you can get into the, like, I don't think... That, like, being gay should be illegal. Yeah. I don't think that being... A, even though being gay goes against Christianity... Yeah. I strongly believe in the separation of church and state. But there's a fucking limit, dude. And, like, I think... So, you get into, like... Um, you brought up bringing kids into, like, transgenderism, right? I think it's ridiculous to... 
take like they say a five to an eight year old or even like a fourteen year old. Yeah. Where they're like, hey, I they're born a girl, they're born a boy, and they're like, I'm the other. Mm-hmm. I feel like a boy. I feel like a girl. It's like, dude, yesterday you felt like a pirate. <laughs> Tomorrow you're gonna feel like a cowboy. I feel you. Next week you're gonna think you're fucking Superman. Mm-hmm. Like, what am I gonna do? Like, give you I superpowers? You. Mm-hmm. Like, and even in my own personal life, um, I've been very open about this. Um, I'm currently on testosterone therapy. Yeah. Um, I had to get. I've seen that. Yeah, yeah. I, I had to get on TRT, mm-hmm. and I'm taking 400 uh, milligrams a month. It's not a lot by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah. Um, like the standard doses for people who like like. Not like the the usual dose for people that like are already heavy weight lifters that want to get to that next level. Yeah. They take five hundred milligrams a week. Oh wow. Oh yeah. Two hundred and fifty milligrams like every wow. every like on like a Tuesday and then like on a Saturday. Whoa. Yeah. So that's what they'll take. And um and they see pretty decent results. Um but for me, I'm on four hundred milligrams a month and it's kinda working, kinda not working, but it's getting to the point where I might need to be on more. Oh damn. And what's scary, though, is the idea of, like, okay, they started me out on, like, 200 a month. So what? You're going to get two... And, th- and I'm a 25-year-old male, mm-hmm. right? And the only real difference I've seen is, like, my strength. Yeah. Even, like, after my diet has been consistent uh, to the big change that it was in March, where I was like, eating nothing, now I'm eating a lot. Yeah. My strength is still going up, but, like, I'm feeling the results of testosterone. Yeah. A little bit. But what's scary to me is, like, you would want to take my dosages, which are still a relatively low amount, but they're medical dosages, yeah, and give that to a five-year-old, an eight-year-old girl? Duh! You've got to be kidding me. It's bad, bro. It's scary. It's really bad. And then, like, so there's... There are um, like estrogen blockers, right? Yeah. Because like bodybuilders, for instance, they uh, if you take a lot of steroids, one of the side effects is gynecomastia, um, which is like male breasts, mm-hmm. pretty much, right? Because when your body has a ton of testosterone injected into it artificially, it tries to, as a male, it tries to offset that with the equal amount of estrogen and the ratio that it should have. And when you get more estrogen in your body, you you uh you that gynecomastia comes out and so some bodybuilders will either get surgery to remove the fat or what they'll do is they'll do the surgery to remove the fat and they'll take estrogen blockers these are grown men that experiment with these things i mean they can get all the blood work done mm-hmm. and they can get all these things done and they can go to clinics and have specialists and mm-hmm. that happens for sure but at the end of the day 90% of the bodybuilding community mm-hmm. or these athletic communities, they are not Arnold Schwarzenegger. Mm-hmm. They are not Ronnie Coleman. They are grown men experimenting. And you want to take these same drugs and give them to kids? It's bad, bro. It's really strange. Yeah. It's scary. Yeah. It really is, bro. It makes no sense to my ass because, like, you know, I'm a spiritual dude. So, you know, I, I really do. Um, I accept everyone. I really do. I accept everybody. I've got friends from every type of ethnicity, everything, bro. Yeah. I love everybody. But when you are fucking with nature, <laughs> you know, I mean, it's really bad. It's really bad. And, you know, that's one thing that I freak out about the spiritual community in America is they, you know, some of them go that extra route. And I'm just over here like, when does it stop? You know, because there is a cutoff point to, you know, I mean, everything everything has a cutoff point well people are scared to tell people no these days yeah it's scared you're scared to tell people no yeah or scared to tell them like hey Mm -hmm. listen man you're wrong yeah like that could save somebody's life Mm -hmm. telling them they're wrong telling them they're doing something stupid like that could be the difference between life and death no oftentimes it's not Mm -hmm. but i mean there's uh there's reports for instance of doctors who like they want to tell these parents, no, I'm not going to authorize your kid to go through a surgery that's going to change their genders at the ripe age of 13. But if they say no, they now get labeled as the anti-trans doctor and then they lose their gig. Damn. <laughs> that's crazy, bro. These are the things that keep me up at night, dude. Who's in Biden's cabinet that is the transgender? Oh, my God, dude. Okay, again... Again, I want to preface this by saying that I'm not a prejudiced person. Yeah, me neither. However, 
How the fuck ever? There yeah. are standards in life. Yeah, she's the head of the children's. No, she's head of health. Bro. Oh, okay, yeah. Like that. Was... The the health like um, it's the U.S. Uh, the the lady that runs the Department of Health. Who runs the U? Ben Shapiro gave it to her. Yeah. <laughs> and we're being politically correct right now. That's that's cool. Uh, uh the, what's it called? The U. The Federal Department of Health. Um, but, 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 but where the fuck is it? Cause, and yeah, I'm only Rachel, saying that because I don't agree with her politics. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Rachel Levine. That's the only reason I'm saying that. Yeah, so she is... Oh, that's, I had no idea they gave military rank to public health service. That's weird. So she is a four-star admiral in the United States Public Health Service Commission Corps. Um, and she has been the Secretary of Health since March 26th of 2021 under, yeah, under Biden. Oh, so I'm sorry. She's the, she, she got moved down. She's the assess, Assistant Secretary of Health. And then the Secretary is a guy named Xavier Becerra. When's the first time you heard his name? Yeah, never. Yeah, when have you seen this guy? Oh, wow. So he's the guy who's the Secretary of Health. Nice to meet you, fella. Yeah. yeah. So, but anyway... Wow. My problem with this, honestly, is I look at this person, even if they weren't transgender, I look at this person, I'm like, okay, you are assuming a, um, you're assuming a position of authority over people's health, meaning that the health of the country, the physical and mental health of this country is your responsibility, in theory. Is that fair to say? Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Okay. You are severely overweight. And you are transgender, which three years ago was a mental health disorder. That doesn't compute with me. Like, I'm not the pinnacle of health, but mm -hmm. I mean, fuck, bro. I can't take that job. Yeah. And I like, when I think about it sometimes, and the way I break it down for some people is like, because I've had friends come to me where they're like, look, man, I've got like really bad anxiety. Mm -hmm. I've got super bad depression. Um... You know, I'm just having a lot of mental problems. What do you think I should do? And we talk about, oh, but 10 out of 10 times I say, go get help. I'm not a fucking doctor. Yeah. Go get help. Like, I can help you get help. I can maybe show you a couple places, but like, yeah. Mm -hmm. You're going to be okay. Go get help. Yeah. However, I'm never going to have someone, if one of my friends or anybody ever came to me and was like, hey, man, I've got crippling depression, I've got severe anxiety. <laughs> I'm never going to meet that with, oh, fuck, yeah, you do, bro. Let's celebrate it. You're depressed? Fuck, yeah. And that's what the political sphere on the left, that's how they want transgenderism to be met with. And don't get me wrong. There are some people like um, Ellen Page, right, Transgender or er, transitioned over to Elliot Page, and it seems like they're living their life just fine. Same mm -hmm. thing with Caitlyn Jenner. That mm -hmm. was Bruce Jenner. It yeah. seems like they're living their life just fine. Mm -hmm. And maybe that was a solution. And I think we're only really going to know the answer to that. Like, that's one of those things where it's like, it's a, it's a, it's a clock. Yeah. We got to wait to see what the effects mm -hmm. are. But like... Like the vaccine. Yeah, like the vaccine. <laughs> but like our... But my mindset is, well, I don't... Like, we don't know yet. Like, we shouldn't be so willing to accept that from the jump. Exactly, when bro. For the last, like, I get homophobia, and I get that there's been people that per, that are proponent of, like, uh, conversion therapy. That's wrong. Wanting to fuck a dude is not wrong. I get that. Like, I, I get it. Like, if you don't like it, whatever. But, like, sh like conversion therapy is not good. But on the same edge, like, me coming to you saying, hey, I think I'm gay... That's not strange. It might be strange coming from me, but I mean, you know, if you saw yeah. me on Facebook and I had a little bit of makeup on and a couple months later I had some high heels, you may be like, oh, well, I saw this coming, you know? <laughs> but like, if I came oh, to you and I was like, yo, I'm a chick, something might have broken my head, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, it's it's strange. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm saying is that it's fucking strange. I feel you, bro. I feel you. <laughs> I feel you. Yeah. But you can't say that. Yeah. You can't you can't say that out in public without being called a pariah mm -hmm. or a homophobe or yeah. a transphobe mm -hmm. or a fucking like how do you feel like the like at least in Albuquerque how do you feel like the hip hop community do do you guys even like touch that 
LGBTQ stuff. Oh or... yeah, shout out Judah Merez. Judah Merez is probably one of the, she's she is the transgendered rapper of Albuquerque, New Mexico. Who she's is this? Dope. Judah Merez. I have a no phone policy on this podcast, but my homie's not here to look things up, so I'm breaking my own policy. She's dope. I've performed with her a couple uh, times. I'm assuming you follow her. She's so dope. Uh, I'm friends with her on Facebook. Okay. Not Instagram. No. Okay, I'm going to Facebook then. No, but she's cool. Well, see, uh, going into that though, the hip hop community did a great job because uh, Judah Marez did rap uh, before uh, she transitioned. How do you spell her name? J U D A H. I'm pretty sure. Merez. Yeah, shout out the homegirl. She's dope. That's weird. Maybe she has her shit super private because I can't find her. Okay. Well, she's dope. I could show you some. Yeah. Because she's got some music on YouTube. I'd love to sit down with her, dude. Oh, yeah. That would be dope. Because I just, again, like, I want to hear this stuff from, like. Oh, yeah. The people who are experienced. I have my opinions, but, I mean, fuck, man. I'd love to be proven wrong. Oh, yeah. Well, see, you know what's crazy, too, bro, is that, uh. Uh, Albuquerque scene, uh, the the hip hop scene has seen a lot of different things, like a lot of different lanes from a lot of different ways. Yeah, you'll have to show it to me because I can't find it. Okay, I got you, I got you. But um, yeah, shout out Homegirl, she's dope. And uh, uh, Albuquerque, I mean, the rap scene has seen a lot of different things. We've seen a lot of different, you know. We've seen the gangster, the gangster. We've seen the backpack rappers. We've seen the, the backpack rappers. Yeah. What's that? Backpack, like <laughs> the lyrical, spiritual, miracle individuals, bro. Those are those are the those are the the rap nerds, you know. That's yeah. funny. Yeah, that's what they call them, the backpacks. You know, the backpack rappers. So you got them. You got the spiritual rappers. You got, you know, and it keep it could go on, you know, because hip hop's evolved for so much. But you know, the the hip hop community opened her with great arms bro she's dope that's awesome she's dope oh yeah and then you know that's the cool part is like if it wouldn't have gone down like that then albuquerque needs some evolving to do you know because fuck you know like everybody's got like that's what i was saying with the dream because everybody's got a dream artistic vision everything so i I appreciate it all oh yeah no i don't think anybody needs to be cornered off or Mm -hmm. denied something because of what they are who they are their identity whatever that is I'm not saying questions shouldn't be raised by their loved ones, yeah. but like in a professional setting, I mean, look, I mean, to be fair, if I'm a manager, well, I am a manager at my job, but if I had an applicant show up in a damn furry costume, or they showed up in their applicant and like yeah. my name is whatever, and I'm a furry, I'm like, yeah. okay, oh no, okay, <laughs> okay, like why are you bringing that in the professional That's setting, awesome. dog? You know what I mean? That but is like, so awesome. but no, like nobody should be denied their opportunity because they're black, white. Gay, straight, transgender. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, because if they have, I mean, if you're talking about her, she's got skill. Yeah, that trusts your judgment. Oh yeah, she's dope. Yeah, she's dope. Yeah, that's awesome. Wow. Hell yeah. So, what do you have coming up before we close out of here? What do you have coming up? What do you have going on? Dropping this music, man. So, 2021 was the year for shows. Yeah, probably. I did. Uh, I did 30 shows from June to December of last year, from when COVID uh, opened, or you know, everything opened back up after COVID to. December, 30 shows. Damn. Yeah, that's getting booked maybe three times a week sometimes. Damn. So, yeah, good it was, for you. Yeah, it was good, bro. It was really good. And then everything started to slow up around uh, January, so I was like, I'm going to start getting this music out. So you're going to see a lot of new music, bro, a lot of new freestyles, singles. I might drop a project at the end of the year. It's going to be really dope. Fuck but yeah. yeah, and big shows too, big shows. That damn uh, DJ Quick show was probably one of the best I've ever done yet. So I'm excited to rock that Journal Pavilion one day. Yeah. I hope they <laughs> caught the bar in that too, because it's called the Isleta Amphitheater right now. Before they change it to another thing, by, <laughs> by the next podcast I'm on, it's going to be... Yeah, that's funny. It was funny you name dropped Journal Pavilion. I used to call it that, but like just nobody knows that anymore. Yeah, which I think is hilarious. I just say fuck it and just (laughs) I let my age show, bro. I let my age show. Nickelodeon is still Channel Thirty Six, (laughs) bro. That's fucking funny. Yeah. All right. Well, listen, man. uh, It's a it's a pleasure as always, dude. Of course, bro. I'm just just real glad to have you. I love it here, Doug. I Uh, love it. Yeah, I'm glad to have you in the new studio. Of course. Um, Yeah. Now that. In Hell theory, yeah. I'm not be working weekends anymore. Let me know when your next show's at. I got you. And I'll bro. be able to finally be able to fucking show up. Hell yeah, bro. Yeah, being off weekends is a good, good thing for my life. You just, <laughs> bro, I feel you. I've been busy as hell too. 
Yeah. Just watch me be the Joey Diaz of this podcast, <laughs> dog. I got you. Oh, Talking about man. mushroom trips and shit on the next one. Yes, sir. Everything. All right. Well, again, um, where can everyone find you? Uh, Instagram. Your social media. Instagram at I am Notorious T. Facebook Notorious T. Twitter. I'm not on there a lot, but I am Notorious <laughs> T. You can find um, my YouTube is where you can find all the goodies. You know, freestyles, everything good is on YouTube, SoundCloud. I am Notorious T. Yeah. And then all Hashtag your stuff's on City Drip. Is on uh, Spotify, Apple Music. Oh all yeah. That stuff. yeah, yeah, exactly. Fuck yeah. All right. Well, thanks again, man. I appreciate it. Appreciate you, Don. And thank you for listening and watching. And we'll catch you next time. Bye, everybody. Oh.